The day Becca was born was the happiest day of my life, and I tell her that all the time. We were best friends through her 20s. Not long after that is when she met Dave. He was tall, dark, and handsome. He was a Christian. I thought, this is perfect. After they got married, it seemed like he really wanted her all to himself. There was really no room for me. Once the kids came along, Dave became extremely controlling. We can sit, stop. David is ex-military, and he likes things done exactly the way he says. David's t-shirts have to be folded a certain way. His jeans have to be on a certain weight of hanger. If I come over with my gym bag and set it up on the cabinet, he grabs it and puts it someplace else. The first time we ever had a blow up was when I was trying to do the laundry. He just put his finger right to my nose and said, this is my house. I'd lost it. I'd said to Becca, you're gonna have to choose between he and I. I got in my car and I sped off. Hey, quit biting me. Four months ago, I noticed a bruise on one of the twins' wrists. I said, what could have caused that? Was he alone with Dave? Oh boy, she was furious. She yelled at me. She was very upset because I implied that Dave was responsible for the bruise. After that incident, I thought Rebecca would call me and say, we got to deal with this. Instead, I got a text saying, we've decided you can't come to our house ever again, and you can only see the kids at family functions. I've apologized, but they haven't let me see my grandkids since that day. OK, Susan, I I'm glad you're here. Are you a danger to your grandchildren? I am not. Are you a threat to them because you are psychologically unstable? Well, that's why I'm here to find out. Uh, what do you think? I do not think I am a threat to those children uh -huh. in any way. But your daughter and son-in-law think you are? They think I am. They think you're unstable to the point that they think you might do what? Do they think you're going to kidnap them, harm them, uh, say things to them you shouldn't they say? They think what? that I am sinful and that the children are going to see sinful behavior from me and that they maybe will start acting that way, I guess. Uh -huh. And sinful in, in what way? I can't think of anything. I do not feel like I've been inappropriate with those children mm -hmm. ever. They've diagnosed you with a personality disorder, right? That's what they say. Um, are they qualified to do that? No, I do not think so. They cannot diagnose me. I'm a nurse. Mm -hmm. I can't diagnose anybody. It's out of my scope of practice. Right. My mother-in-law is neurotic, insecure, and detached. Susan and I have a broken relationship. She shows no interest in repairing it. All she seems to be concerned about is seeing her grandchildren. After I married Becca, it became obvious to me that Susan's best friend was her daughter, my wife. I was getting in the way of that. Susan has been training everyone in her family to enable her bad behavior. If anyone goes against Susan's wishes, Susan's wrath is unleashed upon them. I'm done with it. I'm tired of the drama. Her nose is always in our business. She's always up in Becca's life. When Susan comes into our home, she'll rearrange the cabinets. Susan thinks that she has a say in our marriage, and she does not. It's not her marriage. You cannot speak to her about anything without her blowing up about it. I've never been argumentative with Susan. I've stated what I needed to get across in a very clear manner, but I've never been met with the same level of respect. Everything is extreme. Everything is full tilt buggy. Every time there's been a blow up, it's just the start of a vicious cycle. Everything gets swept under the rug and nothing is being fixed. When Susan implied that I may have been abusive to my son, that infuriated me. I'm not going to take those kind of accusations from anyone. It doesn't matter if it's my wife's mother or not. You guys decided that she was a histrionic personality, right? Yes, sir. I mean, we didn't say that was set in stone. It was just, Correct. this is what we've read about Well, no, this. but you submitted and about 14 pages of support for that diagnosis. <laughs> And I can tell you, that wouldn't even be on my short list if I was diagnosing her. But I'm not, because I, I, I'm not qualified to diagnose her. I haven't done the 
proper work, nor have you. That doesn't mean she doesn't have flaws of, of character, of, certainly. I, uh, it just seems awfully judgmental. I don't know. but I, I mean, I don't like her shooting off a gun in her closet. I don't need a label for that. I, uh, I that, don't. that seems like <laughs> you, don't need to, you don't need to go to psychology school to know that's not good, yes, right? Sir. Yes, sir. But didn't you shoot off a gun in the house? Yes, sir. Didn't you blow a hole in the front door? Yes, sir. And he tried to hide it. <laughs> didn't you say it was a peephole for, like, short people? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I did. Um, so That's right. It happens, right? Yes. But, but that, there's a difference in this. Mine w truly was an accidental discharge. And, but I wasn't. He's a gun expert. But I wasn't. You were a gun expert. I hadn't forgotten to take meds for, for two days, and I wasn't sitting. But you knew your gun was loaded. Emotionally distraught in a closet. You were pretending to be trying to get Harry my way. People at the door. Trying yeah. to get my way. Turned about into Barney Five. Well, I'm glad I wasn't trick or. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't trick or treating at your house that yes, night sir. or something. Yes, sir. I'm glad someone else wasn't too. Yeah, I mean, that... My husband and I try to live our lives according to the Bible, but my mom's actions are not Christian. They don't think I'm Christian enough but I worship three times a week. My wife and I raise our kids to walk in the way that Christ showed us to walk. And even though Susan professes to walk in that way, it's obvious to us that she does not. They say I have sinful, inappropriate behavior. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't gamble. My mom has gossiped about other people in front of me, lied in front of me, Susan doesn't draw anyone to Christ-like behavior because she doesn't exhibit it. He said before he wanted to save my soul, but I, and I've told him, you are not my savior. It's my soul, and it's my responsibility. The Bible specifically states to put away anger and wrath, to grow and become more Christ-like. The Bible says there is only one lawgiver, and it also says, he that is without sin casts the first stone. Uh, well, um, we never said that we were perfect, and we just said that you know the negative behavior and stuff. We don't want our kids to think that being negative constantly is okay. Constantly, I am not negative constantly. Just very often. Just when I'm with you guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe you draw out the negativity in me. Sorry. If I pronounce a word wrong, <clears throat> they laugh at me and tell me how it is correctly pronounced. That is what we, it's, it's, it's so our funny family joke. It's not, I am your family joke and it's no, not funny to we me. We do the same thing between me Good, and Good, do it and to yourselves, not to me, okay? Because I don't like it. <laughs> what I'm trying to say here is you can be a right fighter or you can look for a solution. And I, I, you gotta ask I, yourself- That's what I want is a solution. You can ask yourself, do I wanna be right or do I wanna be happy? And you, this, you cannot be happy at this point. If, if you're at peace excluding your mother Absolutely from your life, not. if you're at peace having a two month old child and your mother has not even met that child- No, because I then, know she loves- Then let me tell you, the person that needs to be diagnosed is you. Well. Agreed, agreed. <laughs> No, we, we prefer it wasn't this way. And, and if you're saying that she's such say, a threat that she can't even be at the hospital to look through a window at the baby, let me tell you, that's, that's punitive, not precautionary. Nobody wants to tell their mom not to come to the hospital, but the constant negative messages were just driving me crazy. Well, here's something you didn't find on Google. And that is when, when you're talking to somebody and you're telling them what's wrong with them, you can tell them one thing and their defensiveness will come up a little bit. You can tell them two things and it'll come up a little bit. But you get above two and it, it just goes straight up to here. And that's where you are right now because what she hears you say, well, I've got a list here of seven pages of, And of, you know, she asked what, what you, Well, what and was. you certainly told her. I mean, we, yeah. And, <laughs> and when, but I'm telling you, when, when you take this approach, 
you're going to get people we shut down. We knew that that wasn't going to make, a, that it wasn't going to do anything good. The first step to reasoning is being able to listen to the other side. Yes. But <laughs> if, if, I, if, if I can't express myself and she won't listen to me, then I have to figure out what my next step is. Yeah, well, I have a suggestion. I think what needs to happen here is we, we need to hit a reset button and say, what's our goal and what's our objective here? Our, and I, I started out by saying I, I embrace two things real strongly. One is unification of family. I don't ever want to break families apart. Uh, Robin and I are national spokespersons for CASA, which works in the foster care system. It's a horribly broken system. I'd rather keep a child always with their biological family than spin them off into foster care because it's just terrible. So I always try to keep families together. And I, I think it's important for children to have extended family members in their lives because they learn somebody besides mom and dad love me. I can, I can expand my world and go out. And I've said there, there, there need to be boundaries here. And you've violated those boundaries. It's just your nature. You're kind of pushy. <laughs> it, let, let's assume for argument's sake that he's a bad guy. This is just argument's sake. Sure. I'm not saying you're a bad guy. No. If that's the case, wouldn't you want to be inside the tent? Yes. Well, you've <laughs> acted to exclude yourself from the tent. So tell me how that's smart. I guess it's not. Guess it's not. I'll give you a minute to think it through. <laughs> Is that smart? Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? I want to be happy. Okay, then listen to what I'm telling you. You need to take a step back. You need to stand down and quit being so quick. You don't even let him finish the sentence because you're so mad at him. He's hurt me. What would make you happier, getting even with him or having those grandchildren climbing on you like a jungle gym? Seeing those babies. Would that make you happy? Would it make you happier than straightening him out? Yes. You are not an unstable person. You don't have a personality disorder. Okay. Could you benefit from counseling? Of course, uh, ever, anybody can benefit from someone that can say, hey, let's take a look at your life and see if we can put a sharper point on things. That would be great. If you want to do it, it's fine. I'll help you do that. But I'm telling you, take a deep breath and work within the system. I'm, I'm saying to you guys, there's too much judgment going on around here. And you may think you're awfully self-righteous and sanctimonious at this point, but let me tell you, that doesn't serve you well. If you really want to be Christian, then you look for a way to have love and inclusion and unity in your family at every level. I don't know about you, but my God is a loving God and a forgiving God and a nurturing God and, and, and one that finds a way to, to make things work. Does that mean that you're blind to things? No, I, you do things in a stepwise fashion. This woman is not a threat, in my opinion. Do this in a stepwise fashion. I, I'm, like, I, I've been in this profession for 45 years. This is a good-hearted woman. She's your mother. You know that. Does yes. it mean she always says the right thing at the right time? No. But I, I have a granddaughter that's seven and a grandson that just turned six, Avery in London. And I guarantee you I would let her babysit my grandchildren tonight without, without question. I, I would. I, I would. And take this a step at a time with an eye towards bringing this back together. And allow me to get you a, a, a family counselor that will set up a stepwise fashion to bring this family back together. I'll get you a good, solid Christian counselor that will do this in a very organized and stepwise fashion. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.